I did like a little sample app. So I thought I'd go through what I learned and share it. So Raphael is kind of like D3, but D3 is more for data and more for graphing. So the advantage of, of D3 is that you can actually um, take data and bind it to the DOM and display it. So you'll see, you can do incredible things with, I mean, just some, I, some diagrams that are just blow your mind with some animations too. And look, you've got like little bubbles moving right through the timeline. So I'll go through some other tree maps. And uh, some of the nice thing is, I mean, you can just grab the code for this is all there. So you can just grab it and modify it and use it in your projects. Um, so lots and lots of examples um, that you can just go through here and just be looking at it for days. <laughs> I really like the force corrected draft because you can it kind of animates and bounces into place. So that's a cool thing. So now that you've seen kind of how you're supposed to use D3 with data and graphing and visualizations, I'm going to show you how you're not supposed to use it. So this, um, oops, this was my uh, little app that I put together to experiment with it. And uh, if you know me, I've kind of been going through a phase where I'm obsessed with Roombas and robots and things. And self-aware Roomba, which is a brilliant Twitter handle. So um, this, <laughs> my, my, no, my Twitter handle is uh, Karen Meyer, but um, this is self-aware Roomba. So this is a Roomba that becomes self-aware. So this is D3, um, done in D3, and then hooked up to the self-aware uh, Roomba's Twitter handle and showing the tweets. So he's supposed to go around and clean up specks of dirt. But really, it is a totally inappropriate use for D3. But we're not going to let that stop us, right? So um, I thought what I'd do is kind of show you, this is kind of the finished thing. And we just step through some of the code in creating that with D3 so you can kind of see the steps. So in our sample page, this is the stuff that's, in, that's required. So you've got the D3 library, you've got jQuery, some helper library, some CSS, and um, this demo JS. Over here is a finished project. So we're just gonna kind of copy some stuff over from it and just kind of see the pieces one at a time. So this is the only thing I have right now in here. You do uh, D3 library select body and append an h1 text Roomba dreams so let's see what that looks like so there it is I mean you're just selector appending it fairly easy stuff uh, it's actually part of the yeah it's the same jQuery syntax but it's it's on the d3 object library so let's get some more stuff in here. Let's begin the D3 magic here. So you need your, you need your SVG um, element here to put that on. So assign that to a var. So uh, we also need a width and a height that I have up here. So let's copy these guys up here. Okay, so now we have a width and height and we're gonna append on this SVG element and assign it to a variable. So, okay, so now we have an SVG element we can work with. So, let's see if we can get our Roomba up there. Oops, where'd you go here, Roomba? Oh, let's get a room first, right? So now we're going to actually start appending stuff to the SVG. Uh, again, you can chain the stuff. So we're appending a rectangle, um, setting the width, setting the height, filling it with a color, and then we're also filling a little stroke around it. So let's see what that looks like. So now we've got a room. Yeah. 
Again, we can look at it real quick. So there's SVG, and it appended the rectangle right on there. So now the important stuff. Um, let me see. Oh, we've got a couple more. Well, let's go ahead and we'll just switch to the Roomba first. Okay, so we need some data for the Roomba because it's data-driven after all. And even though we're kind of using, using D3, so we're going to give, um, the Roomba data is going to be its X and Y position. Sure. I'm not an SVG um, expert either, but I think it's raw SVG. Is anybody around? Okay. Okay, so let's get our Roomba on here. So this is more of the interesting part here. Okay, let's make sure it works first before we go into explaining it. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work, of course. Let's see what our problem is. We're missing Roomba image not defined. Uh, probably. Mm, Roomba image. I guess it's a radius or something. Let me look at it a little bit. There. Oh yeah, it's the width and the height here. Okay. Yay! We've got a Roomba! Woohoo! Okay, so let's look at the code a little bit here. So um, this is getting into the data set. So um, SVG, this is kind of weird when you kind of select it before you have it because this this Roomba, well, let's look at the, the DOM here. Okay, so this graphic is the Roomba here. But it's kind of weird when you select into it because uh, it doesn't exist yet, but that's okay. So you are going to select something that you're going to kind of refer to as a Roomba and then you're going to enter this data set and this is the Roomba data set and enter it. And then for each one, you're going to append a graphic SVG image, a class Roomba, and then this Roomba GIF. So that's kind of weird, but it works. Okay, what else can we do here? Um, you want to put some dirt on too now? Okay, whoops. We'll put some dirt on and then we can just look at the rest of the finished code rather than me just copying and pasting. So that'll give you the last thing. So, let's see, there's dirt. We want to init the dirt with some random dirt. And um, then we're doing the same thing with this dirt as well. We're entering, we're selecting, we're selecting the dirt and then entering in it and then we're having a function to um, make the actual DOM manipulations. And it didn't work. What do we miss? Stupid bars. Alright. Dirt, um, dirt radius. Alright. I still don't see my dirt. Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna switch back to the one that's already been cooked and baked in the oven. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and look at this code for a minute and just see how it works rather than me copying and pasting. Okay, so let's go to the SVG magic. Do I need to make it a little bit bigger? All right, is it okay? Bump it a little bit. Okay. 
So up here are all the kind of VARs with the data. Um, so the, the data that we have is the Roomba data and then we have the dirt data that we fill it up with some random placement of it. And here is all the D3 stuff. So you saw before um, where we're creating it, we're filling in the dirt, we're putting the Roomba in here, and um, here's the stuff for tweet, uh, putting in the tweets. And then we have two functions, which is get tweets and move. So the get tweets is probably the easiest one. So you get the tweets from the JSON. And then you show the tweets, obviously. This is showing the tweets. And um, the moving is another transformation. And this is kind of like when Mitch was saying with the transitions and uh, transforming it. It's kind of doing the same thing. You have an old X and an old Y and a new Y. And um, you're transitioning between the old X and then the new Y with an animation. So it's kind of kind of this a very similar thing. And then you clean up some dirt and then you show the tweet and you call it again after a delay. So basically that's, that's what it is. So you should not do this unless it is a learning exercise. This is not what D3 is for. So D3 is for stuff like this with data. So if you want to do stuff like this, you probably should use Raphael or something else. But it was a good learning exercise. So, any other question that I can answer? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't have the... Um, I can tell you... I don't know. I mean... You know how much big yours is? Sort of. Oops. No. Got all sorts of coming up. Three. Um, I, the reason I was researching it is because we were going to look into doing some data driven desktop visualization uh, and that's a good good thing for doing that with custom charting so that would be a good fit for it so um, so size 115k minimized Oh, for Raphael. Okay. Yeah, this one's 115k. So. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's more heavyweight. Right. So, and they have a pretty active community, and people are coming up with, like, new graphs every day. So, you can, if you're interested, you can subscribe to those communities and find new, what is this, like, Circle square illusions. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you feed JSON into it, and then when your data changes, it refreshes. So it binds it to the data. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's real nice for graphing like that. also making raindrops. I haven't seen this one. Circular layout. But yeah, I mean the code is just like all here, right? So you could just run with it. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta I don't know what this is. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> LCF notation. I have no idea. But of course you have yeah, you have the bar chart bar charts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Okay. NBD3? Is that D3? Okay, yeah. This looks good. Yeah, bootstrapper charts. <laughs> That's pretty cool too. Yeah. I think just using jQuery, really. I mean, it's, it's got a very jQuery-like syntax, right? Yeah, the chaining and everything. So, any other questions? All right. Anybody else want to show anything? I, I could show you. <laughs> I have been working on closure scripting, but it's not working all the way yet. So, if you want to see it in progress, you want to see it in progress. Okay. Um. Um. Hold on. Let's see workspace. Oh wait, wait. Game. Oh, that's part of it, but that's not the part I have working, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, that's the part I kind of have working right now. And then I need my. I wonder if my browser remembers my index here. Browse to it, which is a drag. You can look at that while I'm trying to find this. Mm. Um, what is it called? Why is my view of Finder so weird? But I just got into. I just want like my normal, my normal finder. Oh, sorry, it's down here. All of a sudden, I get into a de demo and I can't think anymore. My mind goes blank. I think it's enclosure land workspace. Ah, there we go. Public. Oh, wrong public. Try to move this around. This guy. Okay. So I made I made this tic tac toe graphic myself. I just like to tell you that. I also made these markers all by myself. Look at that. Yeah, and so you can choose, you can choose O or X, and that's all I have working so far. I think that I just broke that button a little bit ago. But um, like I said, I'll, I'll kind of show you uh, just a little taste of, of what Clojure Script is. So it's a compiled language that compiles into um, JavaScript. I'm using this library called Domina, and uh, it's kind of strange to look at here. But um, like the choosing the markers, this is uh, this listen. So you're attaching event listener to this DOM object. You're finding it by ID. And on the click, you're doing this event. So you're uh, kind of, <laughs> it's a lot of parentheses, but it's OK. This <laughs> so this is the target event, or the target event, um, or the event of 
you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so um, we're removing the class inactive and then we're going ahead and adding the class active to it. So we're just doing chaining, right? This kind of like arrow thing just because it does chaining. And then we're finding the other guy, the X marker choose, and we're moving active from him and um, making that active. So uh, if you wanted to see what this looks like, I can't remember if I can just do debugger. Switching between coffee script and closure script is not really good for your mind, but we'll see if this. <laughs> what? what was that? Oh yeah. <laughs> is it this? Is it this breakpoint there, or is it not? Oh yeah. No, it did not breakpoint. So. Oh, I don't have my my compiler, automatic compiler running. That is why. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know whether you guys want to see me get all set up with a project. But anyway, you break into this and you kind of see all the compiled um, into JavaScript, which is really, really ugly. I mean, it's not even pretty at all. I mean, you can see a little bit of it right now in the... It's not that easy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I love the Lisp syntax, but the debugging I haven't really. I mean, I haven't done it a whole lot, but it's. I mean, here's the. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I'm so trying I to think. You can't do that too. Yeah. I mean, that makes it. I haven't really done it that way. I've just been kind of like refreshing the browser, but um, that's be kind of like poking around and, and playing that. I should try that and hook it up. Um, so yeah. So that's what the code looks like. But um, it's been. I'll I'll let you know when it's farther along. I can. Uh, but the nice thing about it, the here's here's the reason why. Because I started off. I started off with this code and just regular closure code. Like uh, this is a uh, tic tac toe game that has beliefs and goals in accordance with McCarthy's um, free will, simple deterministic free will. So I was playing around with that. So. This is a simple tic-tac-toe program that exhibits simple deterministic free will. Um, and I did it as server side and I was like, hey, you know, I'd really like to do kind of a web page of this. So I can just copy and paste this, move this into my copy, uh, my um, closure script file and reuse it. So that is the big win part, right? Yeah, this is closure code, this is closure script code. It's the same. Totally the same. So that's like one of the really cool parts. So anyway, I'll let you know when it's further along. Anything else?